Oh, and Senator Rand Paul giving the Tea Party's response to the State of the Union offered a surprising yet simple solution to America's debt problems, common sense. Parties will have to agree to cut. We have to work together or we'll never fix our fiscal mess. Bipartisanship is not what is missing in Washington. Common sense is. Trillion dollar deficits hurt us all. Printing more money just feeds the never ending appetite for spending and it hurts us all. Joining us now, Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. Thank you for being with us, Senator. I'm going to start you off with a chance to mint your own Mark Twain quote. I kind of had the feeling that maybe the, the Tea Party had kind of fizzled and was uh, on the way to dying. What do you say about that? Well, the Tea Party's been out there for a couple of reasons. I think we're equal parts chastisement to both parties. And uh, both parties need to learn that we have to cut spending and that we have to give up on our sacred cows. But I was particularly insulted by the president last night saying that he's cut the deficit by $2 trillion. What planet does he live on? So he added $6 trillion to debt. What did he do? Because he didn't add $8 trillion, he saved us $2 trillion? It's absurd. I can't believe more people don't challenge him on this. Yes, I see. Now, um, to your credit, you attack both parties as being part of this spending problem. But in terms of actually trying to get something done inside the Senate, are you offending the Republican colleagues that you need to work with to try to reach some compromises with the Dems? Not necessarily. I think if you talk to Republicans, they'll acknowledge that during the Bush years, there were a lot of new federal programs added. But right now, it's, it's gone up exponentially. And we have to address the problems because we're getting dangerously close to a point of insolvency. So I think most of my colleagues are with me on this, that we do have to cut spending. We do have to get started on this. So I don't think you'll find a lot of disagreement with my colleagues on that. Yeah, the startling thing is when we talk about cutting the deficit, they're never talking about eliminating it. They're going to continue to spend more than they take in every year. They just want to make that overspend a little smaller. Now, you say that Congress is debating the wrong things. Explain, please. Well, a lot of times we're talking about slowing down the rate of growth of government. And that's all of these things. The sequester that everybody's like pulling their hair out thinking it'll be a disaster. The sequester doesn't even cut any spending. The sequester slows down the rate of growth, but government will still grow by nearly $8 trillion, seven to $8 trillion over 10 years of growth of government with the sequester. The sequester is not even enough to stave off another credit downgrade, which I think we're going to get unless we really, truly start balancing our budget. Yeah, let's remember that credit downgrade had absolutely no impact to the downside for us. A 10-year Treasury is actually lower now than they were before the downgrade, but they should have gone up. Now, in the meltdown of 1937, we were recovering from the Great Depression. And what happened is government got religion too soon on spending and deficits and worrying about it, and that made business pull back. That made stocks plunge 50%. Is there any chance that we got religion too soon on spending now? We've talked about it so much that it's hurting business confidence. I don't think we've got any religion on spending. We haven't cut any spending. We're not in danger of doing anything through the spending side that would hurt the economy. That's an old Keynesian argument that government spending somehow is increasing the wealth of the country. It's an illusion. It causes malinvestment. The money gets uh, placed into things that government chooses, but not consumers would want. So, no, I don't accept that at all, that reducing government spending would in any way hurt the economy. I think it would help the economy. Can you imagine what the stock market would do today if we were to say we're going to fix the entitlements permanently? I think stock market would rally to that. We'd be up to exactly where we should be finally, and we're on the way, I hope. Thanks very much for being with us today, Senator Rand Paul.